I want to take you on a journey. It's a journey like no other. A journey out there. Look up at the night sky. What do you see? The planets, the stars, a million points of light. You're looking at your universe. This series will take you there. We'll experience firsthand the wonders of the universe, its power and its danger. And to take a closer look, we'll even bring space down here to Earth. We'll seek out alien life. Witness the birth of new worlds. And we'll discover why what happens out there in space affects all of us here on the one small planet we call our home. We'll take you from the beginning of time to the far future of humanity. This is the voyage of a lifetime. This is the voyage into space. begin with the big question. Where did we come from? Aliens. Aliens. What would you think if I told you that you, me, everyone came from outer space? Weird though it sounds, it's true. We're all aliens. Once upon a time, every single thing that makes us what we are came from the stars. We live in a small corner of the universe. This is our neighborhood, the solar system. At its center, the sun. And just 150 million kilometers away is our home, the Earth. It's an astonishing planet. The only place we know of in the whole universe where conditions are right for life. The air we breathe. Rich seas and oceans. Our planet is alive. And what's remarkable is, it shouldn't be. Life on Earth shouldn't even exist. So where did it all come from? Me, you, the planet we live on, even our sun. It's a puzzle because at the beginning, none of it was here. Let me show you what I mean. This is the moment it all started, the Big Bang. And that was it. The Big Bang created the universe, but a universe containing only a vast cloud of hydrogen gas. So how did something so featureless create our world? And how did it create us? The journey from nothing but a cloud of hydrogen to the building blocks of life is extraordinary. The calcium in my bones, the oxygen we breathe, where did it come from? It all began at the time the universe 
gave birth to the stars. For millions of years, the entire universe was nothing but the single vast cloud of hydrogen gas created in the Big Bang. But within the cloud, something amazing was happening. Shock waves from the Big Bang were echoing through the cloud, making it billow and swirl. Huge whirlpools of hydrogen formed, sucking in more and more of the cloud that created them, spinning them tighter and faster to form huge balls of gas. And as they span, these enormous spheres got hotter and hotter until the moment came that changed the universe forever. The first ever stars were born. But these stars alone are not enough to explain why we're here. What turns stars into us? Beneath the deserts of Arizona is a device which may reveal the answer. Lawrence Krauss is a physicist, but this isn't a lab he's visiting. It's a weapon silo. The closest we've been able to come to that incredible release of energy associated with the violent birth of a star is with a bomb, the hydrogen bomb or the super bomb. Hidden in bunkers like this is a technology that allows us, for a moment, to understand what goes on in the heart of a star. It's the most destructive weapon on our planet. It's the same hydrogen that fuels the fire of every star in the universe. I'm standing here on the gantry near the very top of a Titan intercontinental ballistic missile. A huge rocket designed to propel at its very top a small payload containing the most explosive device ever created by mankind. The amount of hydrogen gas in an H-bomb is tiny. It's barely enough to fill a party balloon. But the energy it can unleash is devastating. energy which keeps the stars alight. All this is from just a single balloon full of hydrogen. The ball of hydrogen that makes a star is a million kilometers across. A star releases the energy of millions of H-bombs every second. But far from being destructive, inside the nuclear furnace of every star, there is an extraordinary process of creation. As I stand here in the bottom of this silo and look up at the thermonuclear device 100 feet above me, if it were to go off, in an instant, I and everything in a 10-mile radius would be evaporated. But in that same instant, it's quite likely 